So you've seen the diagram of the labor demand curve, but I just want to kind of go through a little more in depth if you need extra help with this labor demand curve. And what we're doing is we're measuring the real wage. Remember, this is nominal wage over the price, right? So that's our real wage versus the amount of labor that is demanded. So on this side, like we're looking at just demand. So we haven't talked about supply and like remember the firms are going to want workers and they are going to pay or they're going to be willing to hire someone assuming that that real wage is equal to that MPL. And as the real wage starts to fall, they're going to be willing to hire more people, right? Because this profit maximizing condition ends up uh, being satisfied with it. So we have that downward sloping demand curve. And this demand curve is also going to measure that level of MPL because remember, it, it, the only way that someone is going to hire is if the real wage is equal to the MPL. This is the real wage here. So if I said this is my real wage, if I know that this is the number of workers, let's say this is some L star that we're trying to hire, if I know that this is the point, this real wage, this must also be MPL. So really, we're measuring our MPL on the exact same thing. So our demand for labor curve is also our marginal product of labor because I'm going to hire, let's say this L2 star, I'm going to hire that at a point where it's equal to some level of MPL, which must be this new real wage at that lower wage, right? If I want more workers, we're going to see the wage lower. If I want less workers, you're going to see the wage higher at where they're willing to actually make an offer.